Here's your money briefing for Wednesday, June 28th. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. It can be frustrating and costly when someone is told by their health insurance company that a certain treatment or procedure isn't covered under their plan. But many people don't know the range of options they have to appeal those decisions. Wall Street Journal reporter Anna Wilda Matthews joins us. So, Anna, aside from the rising monthly costs, what are people's top complaints about their health insurance plans? Well, people have a lot of gripes about their health insurance plans. There was a recent survey from a nonprofit called KFF, and they found some of the biggest complaints were that insurance paid less than consumers expected for a bill. The insurance didn't cover care or a drug that the patient got, or the insurance denied or delayed pre-approval for a treatment that the patient wanted. Um, The survey found that 58% of insured adults had run into problems using their health insurance just in the past year. How do people's health conditions work into this? The survey found that people with more health conditions had more gripes about their insurance. Also, about 4 in 10 people who said that their mental health was fair or poor said they hadn't been able to get a medication or a service that they needed. When someone runs into a situation where their insurance plan won't pay for something, many people just might accept it and move on. What do consumer advocates suggest that they do? A lot of people don't realize they actually have an appeal process. They don't realize that there's something they can do when the insurer declines to pay for something. But there definitely is. Insurers all have an appeals process. And in addition to the internal appeals process, there's also the opportunity ultimately to appeal to a third party. So what consumer advocates told me is that people should do that. They should not just give up. They should definitely fight and they might win. So this is more than just telling the person on the phone, hey, can I talk to your manager about this? Yeah, absolutely. What the consumer advocates told me is that a phone call is a good first step, but definitely that's just the first step. When you call, you should take notes, you should get the name of the person you're talking to, but that you probably want to file a formal appeal and you'll typically want to do that in written form. You'll also typically want to work really closely with your doctor or your hospital, whoever provided the care or maybe prescribed the drug. They may actually be better positioned to do the first appeal for you or you can work with them, but you'll want them to explain why this is care that's really important to your health and why you need it and it shouldn't be denied. Rules are rules, but you did mention that there are several escalating steps here. So would being persistent pay off and how often are appeals successful? What I heard from the advocates is that, yes, being persistent can pay off. It doesn't always. you got to be realistic, but it can. There are different levels of appeal, and ultimately it can go to an outside third party. And information about how to do that should be given to you uh, in any letters you get from the insurer. In terms of the rate of success, that's not always disclosed. It's not always clear, and it does vary. But there was one study that the Federal Office of Inspector General for the Department of Health and Human Services did that found that 75% of denials were overturned on appeal uh, for Medicare Advantage plans. So that's a pretty high number, and it just illuminates that, yes, appeals can work. Is this a sort of situation where a computer could misread someone's claim and an actual person might overturn the initial decision? There are all sorts of different ways things can be rejected, and that's why an initial phone call is good, and it's also why you want to work with your doctor or hospital or the healthcare provider who is involved, because you'll often find that those entities have appealed many times before and kind of know the ropes on how to do it. But you'll find that things can be rejected because the health insurer says it's not medically necessary. So that would be one thing, like just don't think this is a treatment you needed. But they can also reject things because it's not a service that your plan covers. That's a different kind of rejection. And that may be more challenging in some ways. As an example, there are a decent number of health plans that don't cover drugs for weight loss. So you see a lot of folks out there these days seeking coverage for the drugs that are similar to Ozempic, uh, Wagovi in particular. But you'll find that some plans, and Medicare actually is included here, just don't cover drugs if you're trying to take it for weight loss. So if you're appealing that, that really can be sort of an upwards battle and a harder thing to win. What are some examples of third parties that could get involved in the appeals process? And how would they actually assist in that process? Well, it's definitely helpful 
to seek out some kind of help or an advocate. The first step there is often to go to your doctor's office or the hospital or whomever was working with you to provide that care because they may know the most. But there are also a lot of private and government entities that might help. A lot of states have these operations called consumer assistance programs. Um, a few examples, for instance, Connecticut has one, New York has one. And they can help people with appeals, and they do a lot of appeals in their state. So if you're in Medicare, there are these programs called state health insurance assistance programs that specifically deal with Medicare. There are also nonprofits like the Patient Advocate Foundation that will work with folks who need help on appeals. One good first step can be to call your state insurance regulator. Every state does have one. They don't always deal with appeals themselves, but they should typically know the process and might be able to help you understand it better. But when considering the appeals process, how much of the responsibility lies with the consumer's knowledge of his or her own policy? Honestly, even before you come to the point of needing to appeal something, it's really good to have information and good background about your policy. So even before you seek the care, it might be good to figure out, is this something that's going to be covered before you're fighting them on the back end about something you thought was covered? So what consumer advocates told me is that you probably should have the plan documents uh, for your health insurance just around, right? Keep it digitally someplace. And there's a document called the Summary of Benefits and Coverage. That's a good start. And those often have links to the more complete explanation of your plan because people don't always understand the ins and outs of their plan. That's one thing that we found out from this KFF survey. People don't really always know what their plan covers and what they're going to have to pay out of pocket. And these plans can be very, very complicated. That's Wall Street Journal reporter Anna Wilda-Matthews. And that's your Money Briefing. I'm J.R. Whalen for The Wall Street Journal. <laughs> 